Okay, in my opinion, all right? And that's why I'm saying I'm always skeptical of them. But in this case, I think uh, uh, there, there is some value even to the weakest ones, all right? I've been working with other uh, persons, uh, Donna, Michelle Acevedo, for example, and some other people. We've been trying to put pressure on the city to, um, to uh, uh, have, put forth a more powerful model, okay? Um, well, the proposal that they've come up with, they have changed quite a few things, um, but it still has problems. Uh, so can, let, me, let me explain uh, in, in that sense. Um, the previous city manager had ultimate authority on everything, all right? So uh, the city, uh, the, the board itself could not do, pretty much couldn't do anything unless they asked member. In fact, I don't know if you're aware of this, but, um, and this is something that's quite rather surprising, because uh, I, I, I wasn't involved at that particular time, but the board members, when they first assembled for the public pilot safety board, they were not allowed to talk to each other outside of, uh, outside of uh, city functions, all right, which is pretty ridiculous, all right? Mm -hmm. But they talked to each other anyway, all right? And I found that out a little bit later, all right? Uh, especially given uh, in, in regards to what happened in my situation with the previous chief. But um, the new board, uh, it's still city manager run, or still manager uh, driven, but the board now has some authority to take in complaints and follow them through the system, all right? Um, disadvantage of this type of uh, model is, is that it's not completely independent of the city manager's office. City manager, uh, along with the city attorney, um, there are a lot of ways in which they could withhold information to the board. There's a lot of uh, ways in which working with the auditor, uh, they can limit exactly what uh, is being said. There was a claim that the, uh, at one of the city council meetings in December, that, uh, and this is something that's been not very clear, um, is what documents do they actually have access to, all right? I mean, something critical, for example, would be access to police reports of incidents. Although police reports of incidents don't get, always give you uh, uh, accurate information on everything, and also are, have their own bias and spin. I mean, you're li listening to the, 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 the officer's interpretation of what went on, and that doesn't necessarily mean that that's exactly what happened. Nevertheless, they can provide you with something about what took place or what transpired. And I'm also not of the opinion all, uh, uh, and, and like for example, um, um, in respect to the Casada situation, in my case, um, I ended up uh, with 500 pages of police reports on the Pearson Park incident. And everything that it said corroborated my inside of the story as opposed to what was being told by the police. All right, about the time, time sequence of events, for example. So, um, so, so that's what I'm saying. I mean, the question is what they have access to. Well, they keep saying, well, they have access to everything they're entitled under the law. And the question is, what do they mean by that? I mean, okay. I mean, what is defined by that? And the council meeting where this issue was brought up to Moreno's credit, he had brought it. This is at the December, I, 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 it was in December, if I recall correctly. To Moreno's credit, uh, he brought up the issue about, well, access to documents. You're saying they could access, for example, videos. Of uh, uh, you know camera videos, okay. But what about other documents and other things? Well, I'm, uh, the city manager at that. Uh, no, I'm sorry, the deputy city manager Greg Garcia at that time. He says, well, I'm not at this time uh, ready or prepared to give you a list of exactly what documents we're making reference to. So, so there's still some ambiguity there. Some questions about what what things they do access. They have access to. One thing they don't have access to is personnel files, okay. Uh, that may be, uh, uh, there's been a, dis uh, a question about do or do members of the board have access to officer personnel files. Uh, that's something right now from what we can see is no, they do not have access to them. Uh, partly, some of this is because maybe uh, under the kind of arrangement uh, that uh, has been made, this board is not like other boards, it's not written into the city charter. It does not have explicit, off, uh, does not have an explicit role in regard to personnel functions. Let me give you an example, okay? Um, who has authority to fire the police chief in the city of Anaheim? Anybody know? It's not the city council. City it's not ma the mayor. Okay. manager. It's the city manager, okay? That's explicitly, personnel matters are explicitly written into the city charter, okay? So, so if the city, uh, if the uh, uh, city council is pissed off at the police chief and the public safety board is pissed off at the police chief, they can't fire them. You can't fire them for any reason, or any officer for that matter, okay? 
this is, and again, I'm not opposed to it, but there's again, there's a lot of extensive civil service protection, okay? And I'm not, again, I'm in favor of due process. I'm not opposed to that. But the point is, is that um, if you want a board in this city to have some, or at least a police review board, to have some influence in regards to uh, personnel decisions, then you're going to have to amend the city charter and give them that power, okay? Uh, well, again, it depends on how people feel, too, all right? How people are angry. Uh, if they're angry, if they think it's needed, okay? Um, it's... It's it's a iffy situation. I mean, if it, I mean, again, politics moves back and forth with the pendulum, and depends depends on a lot of factors. But but let me let me go ahead and kind of continue on this. So so some of the problems right here uh, in regards to the weakness of this current model uh, stems from the fact is, is that it, it's not a charter board. It's not like the uh, planning. Um, I'm sorry, the planning commission or others. It's not explicitly written in the city charter. Yes, uh, five minutes. Okay. So um, there are another good, uh, some good things uh, again are, are though that the that the the board can accept complaints now and can monitor them through the system. However, they still have to go through um, an auditor, which is not a, necessarily a bad thing. Um, maybe given the circumstances, that's okay. Although the big problem is there's a tendency to filter out things. That's what I'm saying is that. City manager, city attorney's office, the auditor. Uh, they're actually, I don't know if you're aware of this, I've looked at the actual contractual arrangement between the Office of Independent Review, for example, which is the, again, the, uh, con the law firm which the city of Manhattan contracts. Um, there's actually a provision in there which basically states um, that anything that, is, uh, any work that's performed by the auditor is uh, subject to attorney client privilege, okay? Yeah. So, uh, so basically, they could withhold information, all right. Especially if there's a possibility that uh, information could be damaging, uh, or increased possibility that the city liable for something, all right. Um, and that's now I don't know how they do it with the board, but again, if the board gets the actual documents of certain things, you know, it can be iffy. Um, the other thing, uh, I mean, they they haven't done. What they, what really the, the new police review board model has done is really they've just kind of spruced it up a little bit. They've done, they've kept some good things, okay? Like, uh, for example, abandoning uh, anyone who's employed with law enforcement to be on the board, which I think is a good thing, in my opinion. Um, also, uh, they kept it to city residents. There was an attempt by a powerful player in Anaheim who doesn't live in Anaheim Tear me to uh, influence, uh, uh, to, to, to have the board change to where people who don't live in Anaheim could serve on the body, okay? Uh, and uh, I'm not going to go into detail with it right now, but there was an attempt. And, uh, and uh, it failed. It failed. Good. And we sabotaged it. They say we sabotaged it. I'm Michelle and I myself. We sabotaged it. Okay. Um, so and the other issue is, um, like, uh, I mean, there's a lot I can say about this. It's the new public safety report. Yes, it's a little bit better, but it's not going to be as independent. It's not going to be as powerful. People think um, it's. There's some good things and bad things. There was a, uh, for another a, a case of point. Um, in regards to um, uh, uh, selection of people on the board, they still have the random selection process, which is not a bad thing necessarily. Uh, but it's it's a turkey shoot. You don't know who's going to end up on the board. Okay. The reason I say it's not a bad thing is because if you have a random selection process and people get on the board, uh, there's a little bit more independence. People don't think they owe political debt. So, and then let me close on this statement. There were some people suggesting that they wanted people, the council members, to choose. Okay. That in itself can be very problematic, okay? Because they can choose people who will do absolutely nothing on that board. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, I'm open for questions and comments. I apologize if I kind of jumped around a bit, but a lot to say on this issue.